Thanks for joining us for another edition of Weekend Winners. We've got 10 of the best coming through on Saturday night at Albion Park. And our first race is set down for decision at 5.32. Very shortly, I'm going to catch up with a couple of our young guns. Brendan Barnes with an awesome book of drives on Saturday night and Angus Garrard. So I'm keen to hear their thoughts ahead of the big night coming through this weekend. Brendan Barnes in the hot seat. Brendan, appreciate the time. No worries, Chris. Thank you. Big news about the Inter Dominion returning to the Sunshine State 2023. That uh, that would put a spring in your step, I'm tipping. Yeah, for sure. It's really good news for the state. Obviously, everything's coming along really good here at the moment. We've got some good people in charge, and yeah, good things are happening. All right. Well, let's talk about your book of drives on Saturday night. This is a really good book for you on Saturday night. Let's start with race one, number seven, Gerada's Delight. The group one winning Golden Girl winner. She's got gate seven. It's not ideal, but she's low flying this mare. Yeah, she's going really well. As you said, the, the draw's not kind, but probably the, the two to beat her off the back line and are probably going to have to do some work at some point as well. So just looking at it, do you plan on just floating off the arm and trying to find the back of either LL Cool J or Mac Da Vinci? Yeah, it, it's sort of one of those things. We'll have to have a bit of a closer look and, and just sort of, yeah, work out what we're going to do. But there's, there's not really a lot of speed off the front. I think there's Rock and Roll Icon there who's a front runner at his best. But other than that, there's not too many noted front runners. But, um, yeah, we'll just have to sort of play it by ear. And, and she doesn't have a lot of gate speed anyway. She gets a little bit rough sort of if you push her too much early. So we'll just have to, yeah, let her see how she feels. All right. Last time out, she was fourth. She was down on the peg line. But she was really good. It was a fast last half. She kept finding the line. Yeah, for sure. And she doesn't really like it when they just sort of sprint for 200. She likes to have sort of 200 metres to wind up before she sort of has to sprint another 200. So, yeah, it wasn't really run to suit her, but she went super. OK. Uh, we've got the Summer Carnival starting next week. The Mayor's feature, is that the, the obvious target for Gerardas Delight? Yeah, for sure. There's M2 Mayor's features uh, two weeks in a row, so she'll probably line up in both of those. All things going well. All right. And just on this race, which one do you fear more, LL Cool J or Mac Da Vinci? Uh, I think probably Mac Da Vinci. I think he's just low flying at the moment. Obviously, LL Cool J is a class horse who will he'll strip a lot fitter second up, but um, I'm going to go uh, Mac Da Vinci. Okay, race two. Your drive here is number eight, Crazy Shippo. Uh, he's a little bit uh, up and down, this guy, but I thought last time out he was more than okay. Your chances largely depend on the one probably holding up, but do you give him a chance? Yeah, his last two runs have been really good, actually. I've been really happy with him, and um, I'm actually looking forward to seeing sort of how he goes just with the cold little fence run, not having to do much work, and he's sort of he's a horse that hangs in quite bad, so, yeah, it'll suit him being on the fence. Do you think Megastar can hold up? Yeah, it, it's sort of just one of those things we won't know till the start, but um, I'm tipping they'll sort of want to hold, and it, it's probably not the hardest to qualify as to either, that one. OK, so Crazy Shippo in this race, the stable mate going really well as well, Herb's hero. He looms as a real threat. Yeah, he does. He's going really well. Last week, he sort of wasn't really run to suit, but he's got really good speed. OK. Race number three. This is the Open. The Opens are always exciting. Rock with Sam back in action. He's been off the scene for a little while, but he looked really good in a recent trial. And we'll look at that footage in just a moment. He's got gate four here, and there's speed to your inside. It's, it's a little sticky. Yeah, it is a little bit sticky, and obviously he, 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 he had a nice spell uh, uh, over the Winter Carnival. We just gave him a bit of time off while the better ones were here, but um, he's come back in tip-top shape, and he, he looks super, so whatever he does Saturday night, he'll be much better for. OK, so he hasn't started since May. He's now had the two trials back. This most recent trial, he was really good, won by a good margin. Were you happy? Did, did he do everything that you wanted him to do that day? Yeah, he was. He's a pretty laid-back, sort of very lazy horse, so he only did sort of what he had to do, but um, yeah, we wanted to give him a good hit out and, and he had a good blow afterwards. Will he be nominated for next week's feature, the Beagle Johnny Spring? Uh, I'd say so, yeah. Okay. Who's the horse to beat there? Black Sedans, Colt 31, or is it something else there? Probably from the draw, Black Sedans, I'd say. Okay. Race number four, Sam is perfection. He's got gate seven, but there's only seven in it. That's going to suit him. Yeah, for sure. Small field. Hopefully there's a little bit of genuine tempo and, and I think he can go really close. His last start third was a good run. Yeah, it was, and he, his work's been terrific this week. Probably nearly as good as a horse can work at home. So, um, yeah, just got to hope that it's not a walkathon and it's pretty genuine, and I think he can nearly win, yeah. OK, let's move across to race six. Chasing the wind is your drive. This guy's hit his straps now in Queensland. He's won three of his last four, and he was really brave winning last week. So he looks a terrific chance from this inside draw. Yeah, for sure. His win last start was super, you know. He'd been flying, sort of just been driven with one run. He'd been sort of letting down really nicely, but he did plenty of work last week and was just way too strong. 
2,138 metres. Any concern? No, I don't think so. I think he should be fine. Okay. Dangers in this race. Are they drawn the second row? Simon on your back. Beast Mode in Chevron, we trust. Glen Eagle Warrior, who's out in the seven. Do they look the, the hardest to beat? Simon probably looks the main main danger. I think he'll, he'll probably get the good trip, and if, if we get softened up, he might be the one on the sprint lane. Okay, race eight for the mares. You've picked up the drive on Al Antonio Rose. Your first sit behind this mare, and she's got gate seven. What are you expecting? Yeah, it, it's actually quite a sort of lack of depth mares quality, that one. There's probably a number of them that could win it. It's not the strongest we've seen for a while, and it's probably not a bad little pickup drive. Okay, well, that's our Antonio Rose. And let's go across to the last, the trot. We've got Claudie's Prince back in action. Uh, again, he's had a trial in preparation for his return on Saturday night, and I thought that trial looked pretty good. How did you rate that trial effort? Yeah, we're really happy with his trial. He's another one. He's a pretty laid-back sort of a horse, and and he's not much of a track worker at home, so it always takes him a little bit to sort of get up to scratch, but that trial hit the line really nicely. Okay, so we haven't seen him since July. He's had a good break. Does he feel a little bit different this campaign compared to the, the previous one? He, he feels like he's trotting a lot better, actually, so hopefully, yeah, he's just had a nice little spell and, and comes back a little bit better. Okay, so 2,647 metres here on Saturday night. Any concern? No, nah, I think that's probably his pet trip, to be honest. Okay. Just a bit noisy's going well. Stress Factor's an interesting horse first up. And Majestic Simon, if the real Majestic Simon turns up, he could easily beat these. And then you've got G Up Medi, who made that uh, that break last time out. So there is a bit of depth here. Yeah, for sure. And I think if, if Grant can resurrect Stress Factor back to his sort of best form, he'll do a, a super job in Queensland. But, um, you know, my bloke, he's more than capable with the right trip. All right. As I said, it's a really good book of drive for you on Saturday night. Which one are you most looking forward to? I think from the draw, chasing the wind will be real hard to beat. OK, race six, number one. Brendan, as always, appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. Thanks, Chris. Angus Garrard joins us now to go through his book of drives on Saturday night. Before we get to your book of drives, the news coming through, Angus, that we are set to host the Inter Dominion in 2023. That's exciting news. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's obviously something to look forward to in the future and really good to see it back in the sunshine today. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get to the uh, the task at hand. Finding some winners for Saturday night. We start with race two. Jillaby Jackpot Gate 6 backs up from Wednesday night. Uh, the draw's not kind here, but how do you rate his chances? Yeah, it is a little bit tough, Chris, um, but I think he's racing well. Um, his run here was good. They're at its slick time over the 2000. So if we can sort of find a nice posse somewhere and there's a bit of pressure early, we can. I'm sure he can get over the top of them. It does look very even, this field, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. It's not a super strong quality, obviously, but um, it's going to be tough to find a winner I think. All right race number three speeches silver is your drive this is the open he's looking to uh, round off his preparation for next week's be good Johnny sprint last week fourth behind Northview Hustler how did you rate him? Yeah he was super Chris um, I think his sectional showed that like ran home in 26-2 I think and half a second quicker than the winner the last quarter so can't have really asked much more it was probably just the drive that got him beat to be honest. Just go into that a little bit more. What, did, did you ex Were you obviously tossed around going forward in that race last week? Yeah, we sort of talked about going forward. And when I had a look coming out the gate, it sort of looked like Colt 31 was jammed in there on the fence and our Uncle Sam had him covered. But as I sort of eased back, he managed to work his way off and then it was sort of too late to get forward. Then he sort of got around pretty quick, unfortunately. OK, so from gate five here on Saturday night, over a mile, where do, yourself, uh, where do you see yourself being going into that first turn? Yeah, it's a bit hard to tell. Um, obviously, Cult 31's drawn in there in two and Blacks and Ants one, so they're probably going to be the leader and outside leader, so we're probably just going to have to tuck in and hope they go super fast. Mm, so you're relying on that luck that uh, deserted you last week? Yeah, that's right. Um, obviously, I don't think Black's a dance is going to sort of lope along in front. I'd say they're probably going to want to give him a decent hit out before the bigger Johnny next week. So hopefully they run a bit of time and I'm sure we can be there. All right. So you're confident that Speeches Silver is going as good as he has previously and up to winning next week's feature? Yeah, for sure. We just need a little bit of luck or a draw. OK, well, that speech is silver. That promises to be a really good race on Saturday night. We look forward to the following week in the Be Good Johnny Sprint. Race four, Saturday night, subtle delight. Small field here, just the seven runners. You're drawn out in six. That's probably not a, uh, a big thing for subtle delight, but this is a, a race that he should be uh, very competitive in. 
Yeah, that's right. He's um, He should be right up to his eyeballs in this race. We just um, need that speed on. If he, there's sort of no speed in the race, he finds it a little bit hard to get into it. But if they run crazy time, he probably looks the winner, really. OK, so you plan on just uh, easing at the start and then just judging it uh, soon after? Yeah, I'd say so. We'll just um, make up our mind as we leave the gate. All right. Race number five. You've drawn uh, barrier one here with our Bondi Beach. You know this guy well. Uh, so he's perfectly placed in a barrier one. You've got options here on who you want to take a sit on. Who, who do you think will get there first, square dealer or street appeal? Um, oh, it's hard to say, Chris. Um, street appeal is rapid off the gate. Um, I don't think I've really driven anything faster than him if you really light him up. So... I think if they really rev him out the gate, he probably gets there first. Um, he's probably not about us to sit on either, so it, um, we've, I, we've certainly got enough speed to hold whoever we want and let go whoever we want, so we'll just see what happens. Yeah, his last start second was really good in good time as well. Yeah, it was, that's right. He was really brave and at West Point obviously sort of got out in front and ran along, so... He was really strong to stick on, and I thought he raced really well. All right. Well, that's our Bondi Beach race five. We go across to race seven. Key Largo, I'm sure he's a favourite of yours because each time you sit behind him, he never disappoints. He, he was really good last week. The draw's the concern on Saturday night, though. Yeah, that's right. Um, we've sort of had a pretty good relationship so far, so um, hopefully we can keep that up. But as you said, the draw's not ideal, but if we can sort of see space at the right time, I'm sure he's still capable. Was Firebug, Rock Fishman, they're going to be the, the major players as far as the betting is concerned, and I'm sure Key Largo is going to have plenty of support as well. I'm sure you're mindful, you don't want to let those two horses get too far in front of you. Yeah, that's right. We're just sort of relying on luck there, so if we can sort of get taken to the right spot at the right time and sort of be out in time, I'm sure we're good enough. He doesn't have to lead to win his races, does he? No, that's right. He sort of he showed that two back. He ran double or nothing to a very small margin there. Probably another stride he gets up. So he can certainly do it. OK. Race number eight, this one for the Mayors, and we go over the mile. Gina Tiano, she's much better drawn here on Saturday night. Uh, do you give her some sort of knockout chance? Yeah, I do, Chris. Um, if, she sort of, if she turns up and she's 100%, she can definitely take it. Um, hopefully we can get pretty handy this week and... That should help her a lot. All right. Well, it's a fairly handy book of drives there. A couple of tough draws, though, on paper. Which one are you looking forward to most? Is it Speeches Silver? Yeah, I'm probably looking forward to Speeches Silver. Um, you can sort of feel him getting better every run, and I think he's sort of peaking at the right time. All right. Race three, number five, Speeches Silver. We'll take the tip. As always, Angus, appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. No worries. Thanks, Chris. As always, a big thanks to both Brendan and Angus giving up their time and thoughts ahead of Saturday night's program. Time now for a good thing, and I think we're going to cash in nice and early on Saturday night. The Summer Carnival is only a week away. This horse needs to deliver for mine on Saturday night. Race one, number 10, LL Cool J. We know he had a wonderful winter campaign. He's only had the one run back. He was more than satisfactory in that return to racing in what was a leader-dominated race. His sectionals were really strong. He needs to turn up here on Saturday night, take this race, stamp himself as a genuine star of Queensland harness racing ahead of the Summer Carnival feature. So he's our best bet. Race one, number 10, LL Cool J. As I said, 10 races, 5.32 start time. Looking forward to seeing you trackside. And don't forget, if you are gambling this weekend, please do so responsibly. We'll see you trackside.